Over on the left side. Uh, Terry Pluto playing dealer. LeBron, you've been involved in the last two uh, playoff series where the team was a 3-1 advantage. You know, obviously with Miami, you, walk, you got wiped out at uh, San Antonio, and then when you were with Miami the year before, you took it to Oklahoma City. How do you avoid that, uh, you know, basically that not happening again when you're on the other uh, end of it? Well, you have, to, uh, you have to take one possession at a time. You can't start the first quarter thinking about the third quarter. You can't start the third, the second quarter thinking about the fourth quarter. You got to, every possession matters. And uh, especially when you're in a, a do or die game, and, and which it is for us, obviously, you know. Um, you know, so we, we got to just take every possession as this is last and, and uh, move on to the next one um, as, as they carry on throughout the game. Especially on the road, it's tough because they can steamroll against you, too. Um, well, this team can steamroll against anybody on any court. <laughs> so that's that's the... That's a, uh, the accusation about it all. David? LeBron, I know you are in the middle of the finals, and maybe a big picture question doesn't work here, but it, you were brought, I mean, you wanted to come back to Cleveland for one reason. And I wonder, having seen this team come together over the last two years and now being healthy and having the run that you had, just the kind of overarching pressure you continue to feel to try and deliver that, you know, you, with, with the team that is really, you know, I think everything that you wanted, everything that, that they were able to do for you and, and how you deal with that facing an elimination um, game like this? Well, for me, I, I think from a basketball standpoint, that's one of the reasons why I came back. But it's not the main reason why I came back. It wasn't the only reason I came back, and it wasn't just one reason why I came back. Um, me personally, what I'm able to do, um, off the floor as well with my foundation and me being back home and me being able to, you know, last summer I was able to um, guarantee all my kids in my program college scholarships. Um, you know, I'm able to do so many things because I'm actually there, um, you know, hands-on uh, with my foundation and things that go on. I'm able to, you know, uplift the youth um, in my community and also in other communities that, uh, you know, even though you're able to do it from afar, when you're actually there, you know, I think it's even more meaningful to, to kids that, that look up to you for inspiration. And then from a basketball standpoint, yeah, I mean, that's, that's always been my, that's been my goal since I, since I was drafted in 2003. Right. I was drafted in 2003. My goal was to bring a championship to Cleveland, and it hasn't changed. And when I left, my goal was to bring a championship to Miami. That wasn't, that didn't change. And when I came back, it hasn't changed. So, I mean, ever since I, for me, since I went to high school in 99, that's been my goal. Since 99 was to win a state championship, to win an NBA championship. So that goal has never changed. With, with your 13 years of experience, as you pointed out earlier, though, does it give you perspective that no matter what I do or how hard I play or the leadership that I show, that there may be some years that it just doesn't happen? Well, at the end of the day, um, you control what you can control. You dedicate yourself to the game. You be true to the game. I commit myself to those 14 guys and our coaching staff and our fans every single night that I step out on the floor. And, um, and, and at the end of the day, uh, win, lose, or draw, I'm, I'm not happy, but I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it because I know I, I've given all I got. So um, I don't know if there's anyone that's been in the league and won a championship every single year they've been in the league, unless they play one year, they won a championship as a rookie, and then they retire. Um, so, you know, it, one thing I can say that I've been uh, blessed enough to be a part of seven finals, and, uh, and hopefully I'll be blessed enough to play in many more after the, even after this year, win, lose, or draw. Last question, Marcus in the back under the camera. Marcus Thompson, Barry News Group. Kind of got two for you. Number one, how has the, I guess, the line of what's too far and trash talking changed since you've been in the league? Like, what's the line now? And what, what was it then? And also, how I know you and Draymond are our friends how is your relationship after this well I don't think that's changed um, I think we all know what's crossing the line no matter if we're playing basketball or we're playing video games or we playing or we playing catch or we double dutching it I mean it's we know what's crossing the line we know what words cross the line men or female um, and, and ever since Draymond came into the league I uh, you know, I've been a, you know, someone that he can always talk to and things of that nature. But, you know, he crossed the line last game. And uh, he felt like I crossed the line. We said what we had to say. So um, we're in a competitive series right now. And, uh, 
you know, I think uh, right now friendship is the last thing we're thinking about. Thanks, LeBron.